Gang, that state trashy tour is plowing through the country. Oh, baby. So do yourself a favor. Get your tickets at rugarbage.com. Kippy, mm-hmm. where are we going? Uh, we're starting off September 19th. We're going to Phoenix. Then we're going to the Comedy Works in Denver. Another show in Denver. Salt Lake City, Los Angeles, San Diego. A second show in San Diego. Then we're going to Washington, D.C., Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Buffalo, New York, Toronto, Canada, Toronto, Canada. Third show in Toronto, Canada. Yeah. Then we're going to Pontiac. Michigan, we're going to Chicago, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Madison, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Sacramento, California, Sacramento, California, San Francisco, San Jose, Philly, and Philly, baby. Get those tickets. Shows are selling out left and right. We want to see you there. Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. Hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's new favorite podcast. This is Are You Garbage? Oh, yeah. It's that little show we sit there with your favorite comedians, and we find that if they grow to be classy, yeah. or if they're just a big old piece of trash. Trash, trash, trash. I'm your host, H. Foley, coming at you on a beautiful day. We're out back here at Tootie's in the new edition. She's upstairs. A little mega death. Okay. A little coffee. All right. Relaxing, playing her word games, having a nice, nice time. Right. Getting ready for the fall. All right. My co host is coming <laughs> at you from across the table. This is a family Ooh-wee. episode. I owe him an apology for my Ozempic burps oh. the past few days you've been dealing with. Give it up for KJ, Kevin James Ryan. Hey, give it up for Porta Potty Mouth, everybody. Ooh, yikes. Thanks for tuning in. As always, side effects. Please make sure you rate, you subscribe on iTunes. Full video available on YouTube. As you know, those numbers are True to Roof. Cooking. Cookin'. And obviously, the greatest gosh darn website of oh, all yeah. time www.patreon.com slash are you garbage. You go over there, you can get up to two bonus episodes a week, baby. Also, all the fucking, you get hard feelings, you get all the videos we've done, a whole bunch of the short videos dropping, hachi mm-hmm. machi. Get a load of that. And you get tickies over there. No, that's at rugarbage.com. You get tickies. Ah, that's which, where you get the tickies. Which is also an amazing site. And we also just added a second Philly show, gang. Let's Crazy. fucking go. Let's sell that out. Second, third show's getting added. Third show in Toronto. I mean, yeah, the shows are fucking selling out. Get your tickets. We'll see you out there on the road, gang. Yeah, we're not pitching you. Scoop them tickets up. We want to see you out at the shows, <laughs> gang. We love you to death. I love if people showed up. There was only like four people at the show. <laughs> we were just lying, lying the whole time. time. <laughs> which is a very garbage move. How about a nice quick shout out to our producer extraordinaire, the old magic man. He likes uh, grinding on rails and humping legs. Give it up for T-Bone <laughs> McScruffins. Toby McMullen. That's pretty good. What's got up? Like got a little hound dog in him. <laughs> the world's raddest dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, nothing makes me smile more when they dress dogs up like that when it's got sunglasses on and it's skateboarding. Did you ever see the dog Ooh. doing construction? Man, he's got the he's got the trowel. He's, he's flattening. He's smoothing out concrete. It's a good time. Can I just say you boys are really showing the versatility of the black T-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> this guy's stepping all over my black tee. Listen, he I don't gets, know what to tell you. He gets one good compliment, and then he's like, <laughs> then every time we're all, he's like, what are you wearing? I'm like, a black T-shirt. He's like, well, I was going to wear a black T-shirt. We're going to look like idiots. I go, well, I'm the black T-shirt guy. My plan is to muscle you out. I'll be honest It's not going to happen. It, I think it is. It's not. Because I'm prepared to look like a fool for the next couple of months. You've been doing it for 42 years. I don't know why you're going to draw the line now. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's fun because you know, you can dress it up with a V-neck. You can dress it down with a shirt pocket. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's casual. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I got right from the office to happy hour. No. <laughs> Throw See, me a pocket. The, the problem with that is you're not going to be able to get your hands on enough good black tees. That's yeah, that's always been your problem. I you're so you're going to starve them out? Yeah. To give, them the, give them the short squeeze, baby. <laughs> Squirt- I'm going to go buy them. I'm going to go to every DXL in a tri-state area. Squirting mustard on me? <laughs> Yeah. Or at least sell them to you at a premium I'll charge. go to DXL.com and get, a, get, get them wholesale. I know, but we've gone over this. I got a guy this. over there at now, the warehouse. No, we've gone over this. It's always different material. They don't always fit. Bigger guy clothes don't always fit like they say they're going to fit. That's why you're always jammed up in like a purple suit or something. I really think in a, <laughs> in a, I really think in a couple of years I'm going to take a stab at big and tall fashion design. Okay. I, re- I really think I could, I, I could. I have something to offer the industry. From my personal experience. Pre-stained clothes? What are you doing? (laughs) He's come with mustard already on him. Hot dog pockets. (laughs) It's got a Kevlar crotch to prevent rippage. Dude, we were fucking, we were were somewhere the other day and his fucking, his belt snapped in half. Oh, dude, love that. I just got back into it. 
I thought it was the button, which would have <laughs> a little ended early, the, apparently. Yeah. Dude, would have ended the evening abruptly. I would have been walking around with a bathing suit on because I only got, I'm only doing the one pair of jeans. He responded like I thought he shit himself <laughs> or something, dude. He went, oh no, and I turn around and he's like standing on his tippy toes with his hands in the air. Sucked. I'm like, this man just pooed himself. Yeah, I had to wash my jeans though because they were getting too loose. It's not not real jean fabric. <laughs> yeah, that ain't real <laughs> denim. <laughs> <laughs> That's space age technology. Yeah, it this, this, kid, this kid's rocking jeggings. Yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, that's funny. That reminds me, uh, I was watching a movie the other day. Were you? Shout out to the movie. Uh, what was it? Fucking Fargo. Fargo. I do. I was on a plane with him the other day. He was howling at fucking uh, the Big Lebowski. <laughs> oh, man. I've never seen. I don't know if I've ever seen you watch a movie. Dude, you were laughing like a middle-aged woman at Robin Williams. You were just fucking oh, cackling over there. Well, you get to a certain point on a plane where you get a little delirious. You're watching a movie. You know, I mean, you know, big guy. You're a big movie guy. And I don't watch that many movies on a plane. I'm doing all 90s from now on. All 90s comedies and dramas. I watch yeah. Primal Fear. Sure. Great. But I tried to watch. Can I say this? This might be real bad. But Christopher Nolan could pull it back about 10%. I'm trying to watch Interstellar. It's all. It's like, dude, fucking relax. Will you? <laughs> Jesus, I'm fucking getting dizzy over here. I tried to watch Tenet one time. My head almost fucking fell off. I don't know what the fuck was going on. People walking backwards and this and that. <laughs> I don't, dude, that's a movie. I've, I I wouldn't even. So it, intense. I, I did, I've never even seen the pre the trailer. It's that's so intense. That just misses me completely. People talking about how weird it is. I go, all right, take that off the list. Yeah, dude, I turned it off, threw on the birdcage, got my fucking head on straight. That ain't happening. Man, crazy. I love him. Don't get me wrong. One of the most brilliant directors of all time. But God damn, fucking McConaughey sweating. <laughs> and that. It's like, Jesus Christ. Try a cup of decaf. Yeah. Um, but I was watching Fargo, which takes place in what? The early 90s, probably? Something yeah. like that. Early 90s. Uh, which is a fantastic film, by the way. Forget Shout about it. out to it. It'll have you talking Boo like shemmy. that. It'll have you talking like that for the rest of the day. It's our deal, Jerry. This <laughs> is, is my deal, Jerry. <laughs> oh, man. But they were cooking. Uh, she was cooking at some point in the movie, and she was using these, and it blew. I, did, I never thought about it. Huh. But this was it, and this is a staple. Oh. In the eight nineteen, I gotta send it to Toby. This is a staple in the nineteen nineties and nineteen eighties, probably maybe Corning. even before. Corning was the company. Corning. I believe so. Give that a goog. T Bone, can you look up Corning? I believe it was Corning, servingware. I think you could throw those fuckers in the oven too. To be honest with oh, you. Oh yeah, yeah. You can cook at them. Yeah. When something came out of that with the glass top on it. Ooh. But that green, that flower, that's reminiscent of the 70s. We had yellow. Uh, the, the, the bottom one, sure. ours would be the, the flowers or stars or whatever they are, would be yellow. Uh, had a, she, they got a whole set for their wedding. And, man, me and my brother over the years just broke one by one. <laughs> yeah. Till it was just like the soup bowl left. There's still, there's still two or three floating around at Denise's house. They're nice. That'll still get filled with corn or whatever. We had you know the ones I mean? with the handles that had a glass thing, and she'd put it. She, she might still have it. She puts it in the oven. Uh huh. She does baked beans in them. Man. Then, then this is another. This is another fucking blizz ass from the piz ass. That thing. Oh, forget about it. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. We have that. Yeah, sure. Patty that's still has going that. around. Yeah. You put some scallop potatoes in that. Woo! A little mac and cheese. You're talking about home run. That stuff was a lot cooler back then, man. A lot of that shit they just bought from the neighbors. What? Some broad somebody would, was moving. Somebody oh, no, was, but no some, was selling it. Yeah, they come around. Fucking, you get hit with that. A lot of tuna casseroles uh, slopped out on a Tuesday. That, that was a, that was the casserole container. Sure, dude. that's all that was. Patty did two great casseroles in her day, and she hasn't done them. She you know I. I I mentioned this to her the other day. She used to do cheese potatoes on Easter that would fucking, they'd line up down the block, sell out in two seconds. Well, cheese and potatoes. She doesn't, she used Velveeta too. Crazy good. Yeah. Just unbelievable. But yeah, that blue one on the bottom. Yeah, that one. That's a home that's run. That's a fucking. Yeah, that, whatever was in there was, yeah. Green bean casserole from Denise. What am I, an asshole? With, with the fucking French's fucking. Onions on the top, man. which I took me a long time to come around on. Oh, I love they them. They might as well have been alien toes when I was a kid, dude. 
I was not fucking with them things. Cooking our fingernails. <laughs> this broad's lost it. This broad's losing it. Now, I like those from Jump, but Chicken All a Crumb is one that Patty did, which is ba- it's all the same shit. It's, sure. It's whatever mushroom soup and breadcrumbs on top. Oh, yeah. Chicken All a Crumb was a home run, and she did a tuna casserole with peas and egg noodles, which stopped the show. What, did she learn how to cook jail? <laughs> Tuna casserole, peas, and egg noodles. Yeah, it was Hachi right. machi. Who wants Pruno? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's making hooch. Those serving dishes pair so well with salads in a Cool Whip container on the side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And two parents screaming at each other. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> or real well. your dad already left. Yeah. One or the other. <laughs> yeah. And shout, he out, did, shout out to you. He didn't take them. No. Yeah. No. At my dad's in the early days, it was a lot of cereal, a lot of Tupperware, which fucking man. Nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Remember when you realized that? You don't yeah, have to. You, don't, you had to have your license to do that. Talk about thinking a, outside the box. That was for adults. Get a mixing bowl and just crush a fucking bowl of Captain Crunch. Another thing that was going around, I actually saw uh, not too long ago. It's like there's like a meme floating around or something of the wooden salad bowl. Did you have those? Those things. I if what I were, are we, French? Are you kidding me? No, but they were old school. Did you have that? I can picture your family having them. Oh yeah, and yeah. then me and my brother fucked them up by putting them in the dishwasher. My mom oh. was freak out. Taste, city. Tasting like Cascade for the Duck. next five years. It comes out all white and grainy. Oh. You're like what the fuck did you do? I used to put it whenever it was put like, a new coat of stain on that. <laughs> put it back in the fucking cabinet, Daddy. Lacquer that up real quick. <laughs> Man, our our washing machine etiquette was a light rinse, throw it in the thing, let the dog lick off whatever got missed, and then close the door. And let's go. Yeah. But terrible with it. Terrible with it. She's, they, she'd freak out on us. What, by not washing the stuff? By not doing the pre-wash. Yeah, stuff we were, like uh, we, I, we've always said, but I, we've always been a bit very heavy pre-wash, uh, f- pre-wash fam. That's what you're goddamn paying for. Nah, but it when it doesn't come out to me, if it comes, if something comes out a little dirty, then you run it again. Yeah, no, but, but not if there's a bunch of food in the bottom. Yeah, that's but just then getting... it, it then it questions the it questions the integrity of the clean for the rest of the rest of the of the whatever they're called. Some burnt eggs on a pan. Yeah, and you're just. Do like, you put that stuff in there? You put your pans in there? I'm a, I'm anti that, but the bird will do it from time to time, which I don't mind. But it, then it holds the yeah. it holds the there's a film on. You gotta wash it before you make your scramble. Yeah, a little cascade in there. Yeah, I've been doing this lately. She'll she'll not. It won't be loaded, fully loaded, and she'll wash everything. And if I go to open it, and I kind of in the process of loading it up, if they're clean, they're dirty again. I don't like that. I love it. That was I don't give, know. Give, let, let it run it back. I get yelled at a little bit. Yeah. But if it's if it's half full and I start loading it, I'm not figuring out what I put in there and what I didn't. That to me, and that, um, not this is sometimes I know. I know you it's do, not, you I know do it's know. clean. No, it's that to me is why like, do that? Why waste the time? Just that's wait laziness. To, I mean, that's, sure. Yeah. So we we'll go. What anything where you're going? Why waste the time? And the time is 35 seconds to live like a normal human being. Nah. Yeah, no, I did that once. <laughs> well, the, the reason I hated it was in college, and uh, me and Flip got our first real nice apartment together in college, mm-hmm. and it had a dishwasher. And I was like, "Oh man, we're gonna be like these like real adult, mature people, like a couple, two lawyers living <laughs> together." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we fucking the first week we we did the first load in there, and then like never we then we just lived out of that. Oh yeah, and there was like a couple of utensils or things in there that just stayed in for like. 70 cycles sure to the point where i'm like it's just such a reflection of like oh i'm not doing well mentally living out of the dishwasher living out of the dishwasher and then just being like load it back in for years i lived out of the dishwasher and the dryer oh well the dryer i mean the best yeah it's it but that you would just boop hit that for a couple of minutes couple of squirts of water you're ready to go throw a wet sock in there good Good night yeah that's yeah it's all right man uh yeah no it's uh it's a thing uh a mental thing i have with where i have to Fucking, it's a reminiscent of just like a shitty time in my life where I'm like, I have to, I have to do this for my mental health. I have to pull it out. Yeah, we never had those wooden bowls. We would no. do, we would do a mixing bowl on the table. Yeah, but the no, not even the big ones, like the little one. You would like, maybe you would go over to like your buddy's house. My buddy would do it and hand me like cereal in it in the morning. I wanted to be like, Uh-oh. dude, this is fucking a wooden spoon. Yeah, I'm like, there's what just are we, a the civil war. It's just soaking in whatever with their salad dressing in yeah, here. We're not at Antietam. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> no, nah, I don't fuck with it. Make with the make with the real bowls. Yeah, Patty did do this though. Mm-hmm. She had you couldn't tell us nothing. 
When they first got married, I think they got a bunch of stuff as people do. Of course. But this is 78 or something like that, Mm -hmm. that they got this stuff. You know what we had that we thought we were, I thought I was a Kennedy. Were you born in 76? I was born in 76. So you got married after you were born? No. No. So it was like 70. So it was in the 70s. It wasn't from that. It might have been. But I remember at 70. I think you're realizing that your parents were fucking (laughs) two ships in the night when you were born. Patty's stepping out. (laughs) I was at the wedding. Um, <laughs> Ring bear. That's a real trashy thing, too. Ring bear. I was bartending. What are you talking about? <laughs> seven and seven. Drink the lemon. I think for their wedding, they got a bunch of this stuff, and they put it away. And then I remember when I got a little bit, you know, two, three, four, whatever, they started breaking that stuff sure. out. Sure. Let me tell you something. French onion soup Crocs oh. with the handle. They had them? Dude, you couldn't. I felt like we were opening up a restaurant. They had to steal them from somewhere. Dude, we had a whole set of them. They were up in the cabinet above the refrigerator, and usually around New Year's, they would break it out. They'd have another couple over, and, man, my dad would set that up real That's nice. nuts, dude. I don't think I've never known anybody that's had them. French onion soup bowls. That's t- unbelievable. You're too much cheese. You got too much cheese in your diet if you got your own French onion soup bowls, dude. That's a lot of queso. Cindy had to have those back in the no day. No shot. I've really? never. never I've, I'm not saying you're wrong for having them, but I've never. I don't think I've ever seen that in part. Maybe like my buddy Man. stole one from a bar in college or something. Dude, that's one step set. away from fondue, and that's swinger shit. Yeah, yeah. I think we had we had a fondue kit somewhere. I don't know if they ever broke it. I think my mom threw it out immediately. <laughs> and went to confession. I'm not a. I'm not a French who I can turn. Some Smashes yuppie. it in the driveway. Some yuppie. You know what I saw the other day that I've never been? Have either of you guys been to the melting pot? No. Isn't that Talking just a restaurant? United States of America? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like Is a, that a fondue place? Yes. Whoa, it's I just cha- thought it was a restaurant. It's a chain fondue spot. Damn. It seems pretty bad. No. It can't be. It's fondue at your table, though, right? You're not. It's not communal fondue for anybody with nine ninety nine. Yeah, so, what, what, what you went to a cheese fountain? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't go. I want to now. I looked up the menu. Dude, fondue is top shelf. That's new guy Luke shit. He told us about that. That his family used to do fondue for dinner. Could you imagine? We did it in school. We did a chocolate and a cheese, and then we in were like school. <laughs> yeah, but we were in like it was like we were learning about Europe or something. Taking honors courses. Huh? <laughs> Idiot. It was just me and four other fat kids at lunch. <laughs> no. Which was two hours for some reason. But I've done it with my wife. Uh, the Germans, I think they do it in around New Year's or something. There's a... Gash inflation, they call it. I don't think so. I no. think you just made that up. The Blitzkrieg. Um, and it's great. It's like they, you know, they make them for your, your home table, and it's like a little trinkety. It's not like, you know. Don't they call it raclet over there or rac- something? Raclet. I think raclet Swiss is originally Swiss. That's yeah. like the big melted cheese where they just. Buddy, have a sandwich topped with that. When they started going around the gram. Dude, it's a Good huge night. wheel, and they just. Yeah. I don't even care. You could put that on a shoe, and I'm eating Dude, it. let's go. Uh, Fondue's tight, though. But they do it, and it's like this thing where it's supposed to take, like, like dinner takes, like, four hours. Like, you sit down, and there's you have your own little thing, and you can put whatever meats, well, cheese it, like, whatever. There's just a bunch of shit. Kind of like you're making your own tapas a little bit. Mm-hmm. So you're just sitting there eating, drinking, catching heaters, and, dude, I must, I put about fucking. 19 pounds of cheese back. I can't do Couldn't that, shit man. for a month. I try. When me and the bird go out, I try to, like, relax and, like, stretch it out a little bit. But, man, as soon as I'm done, I want to get the fuck out of there. Yeah, you're crazy. Yeah, and it always causes an issue. I'm not even sure. done my drink. Then I slam it. Fucking. Get done, Barone. Hurry up. Man, when you pull the wallet out and they're still eating, man, they really that's, don't like that. Dude, that's just rude on your behalf. You shouldn't be going check while she's still putting salt and pepper on her. Yeah. One, I also think you probably eat quicker. I know you eat quicker than sure. most. At a champion's pace, someone said. <laughs> I got to fucking call up the record books. Uh, you eat quicker, and then you do have the anxiety of, like, the set you want to be gone. Let's which go. Which I get. I'm not. But that's. If you're sitting there with another person. If somebody did it to you, and say you were asleep, you'd be. You wouldn't talk to that person ever again. I like. Wa- you'd be calling them every name in the book. I like to walk into the restaurant. I like that. I like to sit down. I love the walk out. All done, walk out. Thanks again, man. Here you go. That's for you. I like to walk out. In between, other than the eating part, I don't like it that much. The conversation, the Real this, the that. Real fun guy. Yeah. So what else is going on? I'm hitting him with a lot of that. What else are you doing? How's everything else? I want to get the hell out of there.
Who are you talking to? Your girlfriend? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you didn't just meet her at the bus stop. What else is going on? Where are you from originally? Maybe you're not. Maybe you're not a great hang at dinner either. I'm surprised she's not running out. Kim, let's talk about DraftKings. Shout out to them, the kings of the draft. Let's talk about seven long, boring months without the NFL. Mm-hmm. Gang, DraftKings, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving you a can't-miss offer for Ooh-wee. week one. New customers can get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just 5 bucks on any NFL game. Mm-hmm. All customers can snag two new offers every single game day this September. Let's go. Yeah. So download the app and see what you get. You download now. You use code AYG to sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly for just betting five bucks. I'm talking five clams, five benzinos, whatever you got. A couple of shekels. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's code AYG only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. I ain't talking no fly by night. I'm talking the official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours, baby. King yourself. You got a gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www dot one eight hundred gambler dot net in New York call eight seven seven eight hope n y or text hope n y uh four six seven three six nine in Connecticut help is available for your gambling problem call eight eight seven eight 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 seven eight nine seven 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 or visit ccpg dot org Please play responsibility on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resorts. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. CDKNG.co slash football for eligibility terms and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after insurance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Do it, gang. Otherwise, let it ride. <laughs> Kip, this is Factor. Factor, baby. I know you're a fan. I'm a fan. You know I'm a fan, sure. and I know the long hair's a fan. Uh-huh. Shout out to Factor, gang. It's the fall. You don't want to be worried about your meals. You mm-hmm. want to get focused on Halloween, Thanksgiving, what you're wearing for Christmas. Look good, feel good. Factor Meals has got you covered. Stop the planning, trip to the grocery store, the prepping, the cleanup. Factor America's number one ready-to-eat meal, ready meal kit delivers chef-prepared foods Right to your door. Uh huh. Not only is Chef prepared their dietitian approved Woo! meals, baby. They're always fresh, never frozen, ready in just two minutes. I throw it on a skillet, shake it up. It's going to be have me in Halloween season. I'm going as a slutty nurse this year. There you go. Uh, I had one yesterday. The chicken shredded chicken taco bowl. Throw it on the pan. Two two minutes. Dump some in a fucking low carb wrap burrito. Good night. I'm Shout a turkey out. chili gal myself. Uh, with over 34 flavor packed options each week, meal times are always delicious. You can even level up with Factors Gourmet Plus line that has premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, there truffle butter, asparagus. Look at that. The fancy stuff. Head to factormeals.com slash garbage50 and use code garbage50 to get 50% off. That's code garbage50 at factormeals.com slash garbage50 to get 50% off. Do it, gang. So what else? Yeah, a lot like, of what like else. a like a fucking like an uncle who comes around once a year. Well, the Foley's we didn't talk when we, when we were eating back in the day. At, at a restaurant, I don't know what my parents talked about. Me and my brother were just causing trouble and getting yelled at, knocking over drinks, mm-hmm. knocking over sodies. Sure. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of like, yes, yeah, we weren't like talking about politics and shit. No. But you love a nice din din. I do love a nice din din. It's got to be a real He doesn't s- like people though. It's got to be a real select cast. Sure. That I feel real comfortable with. Who's more comfortable than your girlfriend? But sometimes, no, when there's other people there. Yeah, me and her, it's fucking out the door. Yeah. I'm running the show. It ain't great. <laughs> oh, I'm well aware. I am well aware. Uncle Hank's a tough hang. I'm, you know? well, I'm well aware of the, the vibes you throw out when you ain't having it. When we're together, we... <laughs> the entree show, we pull out the starter pistol. <laughs> <laughs> when we eat together... On your mark. When we eat together, it's real... Who, me and you? Yeah, it's real older couple who's over each other. <laughs> sure. Once that, we're just we're just waiting for the plates at the table. Well, it's also, yeah. I mean, yeah. But, like, we travel. If it's just me and you traveling somewhere, it's like we've spent nine hours of the day together already. Yeah. It's not like you went and worked your job, I went and worked my job, and then we came down. You're like, oh, you know what happened today? I want to start it's bringing. Like we live all day together, and then we just do the cliff notes. I wonder if we're shitting on people. I want to start. Oh yeah, that's nice. I want <laughs> to start doing the paper at uh, at breakfast. I feel like that could really stretch it out a little bit. With who? Anybody. Like if you and I, you're gonna read two headlines and then dive right into Snoopy, dude. Come on. Sure. Let's see what's going on. 
See what Clifford's up to, whatever it is. Dilbert. See what Dilbert's, what hijinks Dilbert's in. Nice paper. Some juice. Oh, so you're not, I'm not going to sit there and let, have you read the paper and then dictate me your interpretation of what's happening around the but world. But then I could flip it down and say something to you and then flip it back up. Yeah, nobody wants to be on the other side of that, dude. <laughs> I'd rather be eating alone. You're looking down your glasses to me. What, hey, what was that? It's so fun. You're not interested in the news. You just want to prop for your dickheadedness. Yes. yes. Something yes. to allow them to That's be meaner. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what was that? And then flip it up the second you're about to say something. Yeah. That's all right. Sure. Uh, all right. All of that aside, we got a goddamn family episode, Hachi, gang. Machi. We got to get into your garbage questions. As you know, when you sign up for Patreon, we will answer your garbage question on the air. Uh, got a lot of submissions. Patreon obviously gets first crack at it because we love yous. Uh, we love everybody. That Patreon's all right. Uh, this one's from uh, Jesus or Jesus. I don't know. Never have one read. Is it garbage if your mom cooks? The AT&T technician lunch came downstairs and saw this bozo in full uniform tearing up some scrambled eggs at the kitchen table. Ew. That's like, obviously you want to say yes if you're hungry. You got to eat it standing. <laughs> yeah, you can't have your feet up on the couch. She fucked him. What are we talking oh, about I didn't here? even think of that. What? Oh, hey, Jesus. Sorry to break the news <laughs> to you, pal. But as yeah. long as you get free nights and weekends, yeah. who cares? Yeah. And you're about to have two Christmases. <laughs> so enjoy that. Yeah, fuck. But again, if the vibe's right and I was in there, I wouldn't say no to a sandwich. Yeah, you would. You would because you don't like I, you're you. I, you want the sandwich. Yes. Mm -hmm. You would love to. If it's a, a house I wanted to live in and like you got and she was like a like, you know, you got a real good mom vibe from her. I don't know. I might. I don't think you. I, I don't. Socially, you wouldn't. Well, you, you just you don't even like sitting down with me and eating lunch. What, are you going to talk to this complete stranger? It's different psychologically. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't think you will. You're not comfortable in those I could situations. Do, I could do the, the the. I got 10 minutes of small talk in me. Why I woof it down? I could see come across like a real I nice guy. It's going to take 10 minutes for you to finish Scrambies. Come on. Five <laughs> minutes. Even better. Fuck, you got them in your hand, popping them like aspirin. Uh, Reading the paper. That's a tough look. <laughs> Just popping the paper down. You know, Patty loves a man in uniform. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there the whole time. <laughs> Will you two knock it off? <laughs> uh, get a room already. I'm reading my horoscopes. Uh. Oh, I used to love that. That was the one thing I did read in the newspaper. Sure. Just to see how full of shit it was. Yeah. I never fucking bought into that, but that was the one oh, thing. Oh, I did. Hook, line, and sinker. Of course you did. New York Post. Uh, Sally something. Read Sally. the New York Post? As a kid? No, when I was young, like in my 20s and oh, stuff. I'm talking, I'd be like seven, being like, let me fucking scope this out. I would just use Silly Putty on it. That was a good time. That's the only thing that I thought was I was for. a spy, dude. Oh, fucking man. retrieving the classified documents. What's your sign? I'm a Leo. Leo. Classic Leo. Leo, Leo Daily Horoscope. Married Leo signs will feel the full effect of Venus. And I already hate this. this yeah, isn't it's even fun. No, cool. I'm going to tell you right now. Find out the lady who does the New York Post. It's Sally something. I want to say Sally Brompton, but I don't think it is. It's like Sally Abrams or Sally. Sally Brompton. You nailed it. Did I? Yeah. What's Sally Brompton saying for Pisces? All right. She's always good. No matter no, no matter no, no matter how annoying some of the people you have to deal with today may be, you must stay calm and always react in a civilized fashion. This broad is way off. Yeah, uh -uh. that should be mine. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, just maybe, move your more agreeable attitude will shame them into changing their ways. I am. I'm going to be more agreeable. Kevin. Good to see you. Shut I like up. your shirt. Shut up, big head. Uh, what's Leo? Even though money matters are under excellent stars at the moment. All right. <laughs> Shout out to Patreon.com. <laughs> Today's full moon warns you need to watch your step when dealing with people whose outlook on life is more materialistic than yours. That's you. Hello. They won't hesitate to cheat you. Yeah. You fucking sandbagging son of a bitch. I stole your car. <laughs> in my outfit. In my, in my, in my fit. Oh, mine's sick, dude. The only burials, the only barriers you will have to contend with today are the ones that you create in your own mind. Jesus, I'm like Neo, dude. Yeah, I just gotta free myself. The more you, the I think the shrooms kicked in when she was right. <laughs> the more you are tempted to believe that a particular goal is beyond your reach, the more likely it is that you can grasp it with ease. There you go. Yeah, sure. I'm buying a car. I'm doing something. This is like psychic stuff to me. It's like you then just apply it how it vibes. You know what I mean? Do you it's really true. buy into it? If it's good, 
Like if if it says good things are gonna happen, should we get a psychic to come? That would be no. a, That would be a no. great Patreon episode, no. dude. I would love that. No, read our tarot cards. Fuck or something? that, dude. No. I remember. I remember back in the day there was there was this comic. She would go around trying to read tarot cards. I was put her in a chokehold. Yeah, dude. She started dealing something. It was like the king of death. Yeah. I was like, later, I'm no, out. Oh, you're the, not finishing that. Nah, you didn't mess with that. What are you nuts? <laughs> Get out of here. Disgrusty. Huh? Yeah. I had a girl. Be dumping garlic water on you. I had a girl. Uh-uh. Nah, you don't, you don't fuck with David. Psychics aren't vampires, You don't dude. know who. You don't know who. <laughs> he's, he's drizzling garlic butter on her. He's <laughs> eating a bunch of garlic bread. Oh, guys. Uh, uh. Guys, I'm going to eat this witch. <laughs> nah, you don't. You don't. Dude, they open portals and stuff like that. You don't know what's going home with you and following you around. You don't mess with that shit. If psychics had the ability. To, as you say, open portals. They don't do it on purpose. They don't know what they're doing. And then all of a sudden they let something in. And then next thing you know, my head's spinning around in the bedroom. That's never happened anywhere. It would be a billion dollar industry if they could do that. I think it is. They do well. No, but like each one would be making a billion dollars. Psychics and mediums. No, you don't mess with that stuff. No. No. <laughs> I don't <laughs> fuck with psychics. You're more of an extra large kind of guy. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Also, I gave you a compliment. Extra large is pretty good. Be a skinny mini. Thank you, sir. Um, I don't know. That would be fun. I had a girl read my heart. She was like trying to read my palm. Dude, I was in first grade on the bus. I'll never forget. You name need was... moisturizer. Her name... <laughs> Are these boogers or your lifeline? And she told me I had a short lifeline. I hate that. I know which one that is. I don't know if mine's short or long. I Freaks wanna, me out. I almost fucking punched her, dude. I was, I was like, "What do you mean short?" And then it was her bus stop, so she got off. I was like, "You fucking get back! <laughs> Fuck you doing?" Sounds like she was doing real well. Was on the bus with you? I was, I was in first grade. You let a first grader do it? I mean, she was probably third grade. Uh, Colleen, she had a red hair. Let her drive the bus. I see know. how good she is. Get I, the fuck out of here, dude. It stuck with. I think about it probably once a week. Yeah. And as a kid, I'm like, is short. I'm gonna die at nine or like thirty two. Like, what's short? She mm -hmm. goes, yeah. Also, I'm like, I don't think you should, you should be authorized to be telling people that. No, not a doctor. She read a book or something. Yeah, no, we don't fuck with that shit. But that would like be a it. really good Patreon idea. Come in, know. tell us our futures. No, I don't want to know. Why? No. Okay, you, you do realize that the pushback that you were giving is why it's, it's going to yeah. be so I fun. Mean, what are we talking about? Yeah. That's why we're doing it. Regular cards. Tarot cards? No, regular. Well, we'll Deuce, bring a second here, Blade Jin. <laughs> Deuces, aces, one-eyed faces. <laughs> take a jack of clubs and keep it moving. No, thank you. We'll talk about it. I'll just bring them in and be like, oh, this is my friend. Hey, what do you think of my buddy? I would maybe do a psychic. So I could talk to some people. Oh, a medium. Yes. A lot of my friends and a lot of my... Straighten some people out. A lot out. of my family is Straighten some that. people out on the other side. <laughs> you fucking tell that rat prick. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you fucked her. You knew I loved it and you did it anyway. <laughs> tell that son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. My Nana died and she never gave anyone in the family a biscuit recipe. Can sure. you get that Can you for get me? That? <laughs> Can you hunt her down? Ask her if it was cinnamon or nutmeg. She'd always play hardball at Easter. Uh, yeah. There's that one dude on the internet. I don't know what his name is. He wears glasses. He can guess, like, the name of somebody that you knew. Man, he re it looks real as shit. Oh, the guy who stands in a room with 80 people going, Jim, I'm Anything getting a with a J? J? No, he fucking hits the whole name. Dude, you're seeing an edited version of it. You think they're actors? No, but they're people look. I think what happens with this a lot of a lot of times is they're people looking to believe. And then he goes, anybody with an N, anybody lose anybody with an N, a cancer. A lot of time these people fill out fucking questionnaires, too. Mm. There was a six, like a dateliner, 60 minutes on it where like you go in and they have someone like in the waiting room of like, oh, who are you here for? Oh, it's my son died. Well, whatever. And like they just pass the information. Oh, man. It's like Leap of Faith with Steve Martin. You ever see that? Good film. Good film. I've seen the Leap of Faith with Jamie Thomas. Goddamn right. Yeah. Deep cut. Mm -mm. Never saw it. Porno? No, it was a skateboarding. Skin friend. flick, as we called it back Ooh, in the day. Nudie mags. Uh, all right, let's get back to it, gang. This is from Russ. Uh, have you or your friends or family ever done a drive-by with a paintball gun? Yeah, squirt guns. Well, that's not paintball. I mean, squirt guns. That's good childish fun. A fucking paintball gun's an assault. We ended up getting into a fight with the one kid. I felt bad for him. 
My one buddy got out, like tried to fight him. Just some fucking kid walking home. We like, like, you got hit with you got hit with paintball guns, or or I'm sorry, we were riding story? we were riding around with squirt guns, high powered squirt guns, like super soakers. Uh, okay, and I we, mean they weren't government issues. We were in the back <laughs> the of the station grade. wagon. We were driving around. This one kid was like walking home. We started squirting them. And then he, he said the finger. Or he something. said something, and we stopped. My one buddy got out and was like going to fight him. And then by the end of it, we were just like apologizing. I think we gave him a ride home. <laughs> it felt bad. <laughs> hey, but... uh, we had you our... were a paintball rat, probably a little bit. We probably yeah. got all that shit. We could never get that. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh... Ours were called splat guns, I think. No, yeah, we did, uh, there was this Robinson's, like, uh, bait and tackle where you could get a gun for, like, 129 bucks or something. Like a proper paintball gun? Yeah. Jesus. They weren't, they were, they were like, pump action, though. You know okay. I mean? Uh, and this is, like, mid-90s, probably. Yeah, it was probably, like, 8 or 10. Uh, we had them, and then my, all my brother's friends had them. They were in junior high, probably. You know, they were probably, like, 7th, 8th grade, and they were, there was a couple of, like... So not with, like, the can on it, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, we... We would use like the smaller ones, like the cracker johns. Sure. Yeah. So you know can... them well. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Uh, it's a waste of gas <laughs> if you ask me. Fucking couple of virgins running around the backyard. Dork. <laughs> sure. Um, Every paintball gun I ever encountered never had gas. Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're out of the tank or whatever. Pellet yeah. guns, too. It always had an empty cracker in it. Those things look real. Oh, uh, we had, dude. We had, it looked so. It had a clip, I remember, and you could fit sixteen in the clip. Jesus. Yeah, and we fucking man, this thing was like an actual gun. Fucking Snoop. And I Doggie. remember, I just Snoop, Doggie, Snoop, Snoop, Snoop Doctor Doctor Kippy over here. I remember when my dad got it for us. Shook I'm like, Ryan. <laughs> I'm like, this is. I was way too young. Dangerous. Yeah, and he would just be like, "Yeah, go." Like we just like there was like a pond we would the go pellets out. man they were like an hourglass shape yeah they would fuck you up mm-hmm. we had the one everybody had it it was like the craftsman or with the marksman or something you would press the front and the front would open up you had to be like it was a rifle no this was a handgun I remember the handgun that had the two little things on the side and you pulled it that's out that's that you would load that from there yes. and then pull that the black like that was like a an, fucking nine millimeter that looked like a fucking yeah. lizard yeah. Fucking had the heat on there. I had a buddy of mine get hemmed up in a Wawa with one of those. What he did was stick up. He flashed it. Oh yeah. Fucking cops were all over us immediately. Yikes. Fucking hid behind a hoagie tray. <laughs> thank God, thank God they didn't find my super soaker. I could be serving a nickel here. I'd still be locked up if they got those it. Those are trafficking charges. <laughs> Goddamn straw purchase. Fucking arms dealer over here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, there was kids that would drive around with paintballs and like fucking. They shot up my house one time. Those were bad my kids. Friend, my... Kids that got that stuff when they were little. Yeah. No, nah, the Patty had a line. No BB guns. None of that shit. There were these things that were like they were toy versions of them in the in the late eighties, early nineties, called splat guns, where they had like the little balls and they had like this little rubber thing inside. We weren't allowed to have that shit either. That shit either. You know what's fucking wild? I mean, it looks like war. That fuck those aerosols. Isn't that aerosoft? Airsoft. Airsoft. They they have little gels in them, right? No, they are hard plastic BBs. Balls, yeah. Really? They, dude, those dudes are like full blown, like laser scopes and shit. Oh, is that where they're like dumping it in there, spilling it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they dump them in the I hot thought that was yeah. paintball. That's paintball. Okay. No, I think they do that with the aerosoft as well. Well, there's all these like uh, Eastern European dudes who have all these YouTube channels where they yeah. where put a GoPro on the gun, they put a GoPro on their helmet, and they make like Call of Duty style videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen those. They're pretty it's sweet. Pretty rad. That's yeah. pretty tight. I've come across my algorithm from time to time. Dudes are in fucking ghillie suits running around. Isn't there one where you can shoot Furbies or Werbies or Wobblies? What are they called? Those things? No, those are the things Swerbies? that get wet. Uh, what are the things like Mr. Beast? Uh, like where are we Orbeez. 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 I, I think some do short, shoot Orbeez. Gel blasters, they call them. Yes, and they have like a light, so it looks like a laser coming out. They have a light when, when it shoots out. That's that what they show you in the videos, and then some hunk of shit shows up to the crib. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, they make cool videos for TikTok and stuff, and they don't give you the real deal. What are they called? Werbeez? Orbeez. Orbeez. What do they do? I don't, I don't know. know. I'm not sick. Like my, my nieces and nephews had them, and I I like... You'll be like drunk at Christmas and they just got like an Orby gun or something and they get real fucking, they turn into the bloods in the crypts, dude. 
And I'll be like trying to, I'll be, I got one You're eye open. for a kitchen knife. <laughs> Dude, I got one eye open trying to pour a Manhattan, my third Manhattan of the night. And they're like, hey, Uncle Kev. I turn around, they got they got me fucking hemmed up. I'm behind enemy line. Hands it over your wallet. And, and they, they they go they start laughing. And I, it gets to a point where I'm like, if you shoot me with that, like why we're gonna be fucking I'm really gonna be bad. I'm gonna hate you. I wouldn't mind having for a weekend, if I was around like the kids and my little cousins and stuff like that, throwing down on some serious nerf hardware for a weekend would be pretty fun. That technology has gotten I don't know if Raytheon bought them or what, but that shit is pretty fun, and those things move. Kip, what do you know about Harry's? Shout out to Harry. Let me tell you this. Shaving away the stubble shouldn't cost you an arm and a leg, gang. With Harry's, you pick your starter setup at just 3 bucks. It's valued at 13 Look at that. You're saving money already. Mm-hmm. Includes a five-blade German-engineered razor Ooh. with weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover. You can even schedule refills, deliveries for as low as 2 bucks. Talking two beans, baby. Make your entire shaving routine budget friendly. Yeah, it's fantastic. Harry sends it to you. They open it up. Bada bing, bada boom. It takes all the thought process out of it and keeps my balls like eggs, baby. You don't got to (laughs) worry. These are razor blades that stay seriously sharp. Your eighth shave is just as smooth as your first. The weighted handle gives you precise control. So no matter what you're going for, Harry's has you covered. Uh, when you're done with your shave, lather up with Harry's amazing smelling shower gels. Hydrate your face, eye lotion, eye cream, body moisturizer, the whole nine yards. Got Harry's you got covered. you from toes to the head. Uh, get your best shave ever this summer with Harry's razors and skin products. Get thir- get a $13 starter set for just 3 bucks Crazy. at harrys.com slash garbage. At harrys.com slash garbage for your $3 starter set. Do it, gang. Yeah. Now back to the show. Back to the show. Oh, yeah. You guys ever play Assassin in high school? No. Is that a video game? No, it's a thing a lot of high schools do. You live in a hotel by yourself for yeah, a couple what? of weeks. What do you mean? You guys ever burn your fingernails? <laughs> burn your finger, fingerprints <laughs> off? You ever track someone for three to four days? You guys didn't shave and dye your hair and eyebrows? <laughs> yeah, what, what's assassin? Uh, it's where you get like a group together, and then everyone is given a target, so everyone's hunting everyone else. And then it's like a game that can last up weeks. And you just sit, everyone has a Nerf gun, and if you get blasted, you get their target, and it goes until there's one person remaining. That's not bad. It's pretty fun. Yeah. We would do something like that with squirt guns, but not really like a game. This guy and the squirt guns. Squirt guns were (laughs) really pushing them on us. I used to love drinking out of them. They had like such a plastic Plastic taste. taste, Oh, man, it was great. Like a bulldog on a hose? (laughs) (laughs) Literally. Foley Foley keeps going, I'm out of ammo. Well, quit drinking it, you fucking... I got Mountain Dew in there. I used to put soda. We used to put soda in them. Yeah, somebody on, uh, this is a deep cut, but Laverne and Shirley was a very popular television show when I was a young man. And I think Lenny or Squiggy used to have soda. (laughs) Used to have soda in a squirt gun. We tried filling up water balloons with pee one time. Jesus Christ. And we realized we couldn't do it. Like, I guess in our head we were like, oh, we'll just take. Pinch your tip. Well, no, we didn't even get that far. I was like, oh, yeah, we'll just like pee in a cup and then pour it in. I'm like, oh, well, you need pressure to yeah, to expand it. You know what I mean? So I was like, all right, well, let's fucking put try to try to aim, try to aim your little fucking your shooter up to the dude. I, I was in my buddy's bathroom and I peed and the, immediately the balloon just flew out of my hand. It's just peeing all over his floor. Like, all right. Yeah. I had the same experience with a condom where I was like, what, are you peeing in a condom? I was. <laughs> Why? Why? Because I was an idiot, dude. I was like 22, and I was... Wait, that, that, I mean, still, I know a lot of idiots, and they've never been like, oh, yeah, I was peeing in a condom. Well, whatever, man. I was like, all right, I have this condom on. I was going to take it off, and I was like, ah, I bet I could pee it. That'd be a fun thing, condom full of piss. Sure. And then it started to inflate, and then I was like, I've made a horrific tactical yes. error. Oh, that's a time bomb. Right <laughs> I just, there. You just have a loaded gun full of piss pointed at you. Boom. You're going red wire, blue wire, red wire, blue <laughs> Dude, wire. it was a hairy situation. Yikes. <laughs> Damn. That would be pretty fun, though, to be honest with it, you. It was fun for about three seconds until now you're in a whole situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Uh, all right, let's see here. Great question. Uh, this one's from Bart. Haven't had one read. Is it trash if your local pizza shop has a different box every time you go? Man, I never. They Remember, they used to be branded, most of them. You'd get a lot of brand, or they always did keep the same one. Yeah. But then now it's I guess after the pandemic all the shipping like production, now it's like you know, yeah. You get you go to Angelos, you get Dominics. Yeah. It's all over the fucking place. Yeah, it sucks cuz there, there was a 
nostalgic, a, warm, cozy you, feeling when you you know you're open up to Giuseppe's box. Yeah. Now well, they just don't give a shit. You like? I remember like driving. I, my dad would drive. I'd have to run in to get it. You come back out. He like open the door for it, you know, and you like get in. You're like, you, I remember just staring at like an Aldo's box for like you know a hundred years. A cold Friday night, running out of fucking Joe's Pizza. Getting in the car with a fucking warm pizza box on Keeping your- Keeping the change, your, too. Starving, mm-hmm. and just the way that pizza smelled was fucking heaven. Two liter of Pepsi rolling around on the floor. Man, clean living. I remember one time- Shit was all right. Where we were coming from, <coughs> I had the pizza on my lap, and it burned the fucking shit out of me, dude. It was, like, so hot. Sure. So, I remember, like, I, like, got home, we ate the pizza, and I'm like, my fucking leg, like, like, it, like, not itch, but, like, stung. And I'm like, what the fuck? I went up to take a fucking piss or a shower. I was getting changed for bed. Dude, the inside of my thighs were fucking bright red from the fucking Zabok. God damn. Damn the kid up. That little bastard. Called back at a free pie. That's what you get wearing shorts in the winter. <laughs> Porky. I don't know why you assume it was the winter. Um, all right, let's see. This one's from Spitfire Skater X. That's a shout out to my... Uh, AIM name. Yeah, my screen name. Spitfire542. You ever bring extra electronics when you're staying at a hotel so you can fully charge them on the hotel's dime? I may have brought two laptops and iPad, among others, with me during my last trip. Jesus. That's really shocking. That's really trying to pull one over. That's one thing I don't, I've never have. I've never worried or paid attention to the electric bill. Ever. Auto pay. Because my mom was such a freak about it. Even when fucking... I don't know. It never got that much. I mean, also, I was always in small, shitty apartments. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's also like... A house, I understand. My mom was such a fucking Nazi about that shit, though. Lying about turning up the thermostat or turning it down. Yeah. She'd go over there and do the fake press. Mm-hmm. Like, like, press down to, see- then back yeah. up to. It's like, come on, lady. Fucking sweating my balls off in here. Yeah. Uh, I just got jammed up at the fucking... Uh, at the at the house because we left for a couple of days and I thought I set it to like I don't know fucking seventy seven or something like that just so that'll like, ruin your month what that shit well yeah so we left and then we got the first I forget what it was my wife's like we used it was like you know like hundreds of dollars and I was like what the fuck we were only there two days last week or something two days last month left that shit running Hearing, like clicked all like so whatever run program they have predetermined bypassed my me setting it seventy nine or whatever. So it was just cool in the house down to fucking 70 the whole time, which I'm jealous I wasn't at. Keeping the ghost chilly. (laughs) Uh, All right, this one's for me and P. Ever get a party catered by Wawa? Uh, Yeah. I don't think. Recently. Really? Super Bowl. Super Bowl at my cousin's house. She had a shit ton of shorties floating around. It was Wawa, Chick-fil-A, and somebody else got in on it. Yeah, it was awesome. But is that just her ordering a bunch of shorties? No, they do, like, catering. Gotcha. So, like, they come in, like, boxes, and it'll have, like, sure. 12 tuna hoagies, 12 turkey hoagies, blah, 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 and you set them all up. Nice. That sounds like heaven, dude. Dude, it was That's all right. right. Yeah. It was all right. I don't mind that. I don't think I ever did. We didn't really do that many. Anytime we did something catered, it would just be at whatever hall we were at. Right, like a Knights of Columbus or a fucking VFW, and it was Sterno the, City, the Sternos, and it would just be like their kitchen made the meatballs, made the turkey, made the whatever, whatever, and whatever. You know, mm-hmm. that's all. I mean, home runs. I also think too is our family is so big that we would. You, it's not that much heavy lift. And while there is a lot of people, it's like all right, you're bringing this, you're bringing that, you're bringing that. It's like sure, there's a lot of people to just bring some, and then it's fucking you know, we never had to call in heavy artillery, you know. But I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. No, I love that. No matter who's doing what, at every family occasion in my family, there is Chick-fil-A nuggets. There's one of those, and there's always a box of Philly soft pretzel Johns, like yeah, the little ones. I mean, that's got to be... That's relative... Nuggets... Eh. Those Chick-fil-A chicken nuggets are unreal. Unre- and they last... Dude, we're breaking those out cold later that night. The next day, you're heating them up. Home run. No, that's all right. You ever seen one of those? Oh, yeah. <sighs> Fucking throw down on them. That's the Dude. best if you're there drinking. <laughs> and then, you're like, you come home. You go out to the whatever. You come home later, and you're fucking just a handful of fucking nuggies. You ain't got to think about nothing. Oh, I love all that stuff, man. I love a fucking sandwich tray and all that <clears> stuff. 
Anything in those those round things with the lid that never fits. I love them. Oh, fucking good times, dude. Uh, and that Philly soft pretzel tray is fucking that with the cheese. They, for the listener, Philly soft pretzel. It's a company. Yeah, there was this Philly soft pretzel company or whatever. It's like now, I don't know why Philadelphia was so known for its soft pretzels. Toby, like Philly's or New York's not. That, I mean, New York has a super pretzel or like the big guy. But that's like the super pretzel, soft pretzel, the company. No, they have like the big jumbo ones, like the hot dog guys sell the jumbo. Yeah, ones. they, they suck. Fucking stink, dude. But I'll tell you what, family that had the super pretzel, soft pretzel box in their freezer, that dad was doing all right. Yeah, he I think was... in the opening of I think in the opening of our show. You had one of those? I think there's one on the kitchen table, which was all that food was just in my mom's. You were a super pretzel, soft pretzel kid? Not really. Toby? Time to time, we would be. But it was never. From the frozen section? Yeah. Nah, that was viewed as trash in my family. Oh, they were great, Welcome though. to it. Yeah. They were great. Uh, if I had my way, all pretzels would be soft. Right. That's crazy talk. But I don't know why Philly and the soft pretzel was maybe it's like, because I know it's a German. I think it's a German thing originally. And I know there's a lot of German. What do you got? Philly. Ah, uh, but, 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 but I got a really wordy article on a website that looks like it was made in about 1996. Okay. Uh, a classic. Philadelphia soft pretzels are breakfast for many commuters on the run. That don't seem right. It don't Man, seem you're wrong. wrong. Because <laughs> before the sizzly at Wawa, yeah. a cup of coffee and a soft pretzel straighten you right out. Keep you going through dinner. All those carbs. Burn I mean, that throughout the day. This guy's talking about when pretzels were invented in 60, 610 A.D. Well, it had to do Italian with Lent. Monks. During I, the season of Lent, every uh, early Catholic rules prohibited consumption of dairy, fats, and meats, so pretzels made with just flour, water, and salt fit nicely on the menu. It's believed, uh, it's believed early pretzels were soft like the ones we treasure in Philly today. Yeah, they were, because I remember going on some dirtbag field trip in eighth grade where we went where it was like old-timey shit. And they remember they would have like the little shops, the fake shop, like she's sewing. He's a sure, blacksmith. Yeah. He's doing this. He's doing that. And one of them was where they made pretzels. And the way hard pretzels came around is that they left the, the big ones in the oven too long. Gotcha. And they were like, oh, fuck, we can crush these while we're watching football and drinking beers. Uh huh. Catching heaters. Well, this heaters. is actually awesome. OK, OK, OK. Uh, in 1850, bread breaker Ambrose Roth obtain the recipe from a hobo as a thank you for a hot meal and some hospitality. Damn. <laughs> Talk about getting ripped off. That fucking hobo changed the goddamn world. What's this hobo doing? Let's get eyes on him now. Pop, who was that homeless man? Uh, I don't know, Jerry. Oh. But I'm going to run him over with the yeah. carriage later <laughs> so he keeps his mouth shut. For sure going to kill him. Yeah, he then Roth then passed the recipe on to his apprentice Julius Sturgis, <laughs> who subsequently established the country's first commercial pet pretzel bakery. Damn! Huh. But for some reason, in Philly, Philly used to like almost every large intersection in the city had a guy just selling pretzels. They would just stand there with a huge box of pretzels. Like they would go buy their pretzels for the day, you know, a hundred pretzels or whatever. They bag them up in bags of three. We get them in college. We do that same thing in college to raise money for yeah uh, a lot of yeah. Something that we weren't raising money sure, for. Sure, something we were fucking. The drug the fund. Yeah. But they would stand on the corner and you just go, it was three for a dollar at the time, or maybe like a quarter a piece or Bangers. 50 cents a piece. Dude, the right amount of dirt and grit on them. The guy was like fucking, uh, but I never, and I, then you moved up to New York, can't you get your hands on a good soft pretzel? Can't. Can't do it. Uh, even, I don't think 7-Eleven even has, or maybe they still have them in New York. I don't think so. But 7-Eleven soft pretzels compared to Wawa as a Philly kid. They were fucking pretty good. They were pretty good. Although I hated 7-Eleven. I was a Wawa guy, but yeah. that and a Slurpee. Ooh, oh, good night. Good night. Kids are fucking living. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, let's see. This one's for Mason. Is it garbage to order garlic bread from a pizza shop for the pasta dinner you made at home? I don't hate that. This was like the fries with the burger that we talked. Going to McDonald's to get fries if you make burgers at home. I don't hate that because garlic bread at a pizza place. Throw some mozzarella on there. Very underrated. Very but underrated. I yeah. Garlic bread as a whole is underrated. It's real phenomenal. Those that's, ones you get in the freezer aisle that's in the silver, like the, oh, the like the emergency blanket. Yeah. <laughs> like you just, that, the, 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 the bread that just ran the fucking New York City Marathon. <laughs> yeah, They're dude. all right. Getting comforted after a hurricane. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. But FEMA garlic bread. <laughs> yeah, dude. 
I don't know. I, I get it. It seems like a good idea, but in my head, it just it doesn't feel right. It, if you do it right, it comes out soft. No, 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 so no, no, good. no, not that. I'm on board with that. I'm saying going to a pizza place just to get garlic bread to have with a dinner you made seems what? Did your parents used to make? I mean, my, my stepdad would make garlic bread. My mom would make garlic bread every once in a while, and man, we would be like hyenas. Oh, it was my stepdad's. He would cut like a big French or Italian loaf yeah. in half long ways, Yeah, take the top, and then he would make like, he would take butter, you know, I don't know, some probably olive oil, garlic, whip it all up and make this paste, and then fucking, so it's also like not that hard. It's like butter and garlic and bread, which is most of... But the, the trick is that you want it to be soft. And when my mother would do it, it would come out hard. Oh, my mom like the stones to... that built the pyramids, oh, dude. <laughs> it was an ongoing bit. My mom used to burn a roll, dude. Sure. The crescent rolls. Go, we'd be sitting down. Then the fucking fire alarm would go off. Forget on. about them. I forgot about the bread. Yeah. There you are scraping fucking black. You're sh- scraping ash into the... Just try to, try to have a Pillsbury dough. Patty did that on Memorial Day. She left the baked beans in the oven too long. And man, oh, that'll ruin up. That'll clear out. <laughs> Everybody had to eat. Them. Everybody like, jumps in the cool. pool. Dude, yikes. That is also a thing, too, of like you try to, you know, no, it's all right. This one's OK. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, fucking chip a goddamn tooth. Yeah. Crack a tooth on a double egg. Um, Yeah, that is just a personal thing I have where I, I don't feel like I can do it for some reason, although it does make sense. Sure. But I guess in my head, if I'm like, oh, if you're going to make you're making dinner. I get the French fries. To nail a French fry at home ain't easy. You can nail garlic bread at home or buy pre-frozen made garlic bread. Maybe the place is real hot with their garlic bread. I have had garlic bread that I have said there's no way my mom could but we're, come anywhere close to this. We're, sure. We're also missing the point in that we are not discussing the garlic bread. We are discussing the garlic knot, I believe. No, he said no. bread. Oh, he said bread? Yeah. I oh, I was so. picturing garlic knots this whole time. Oh, garlic knots for sure. I don't love them. I might have said otherwise on the podcast before, but I think they're a little over. No, you've always been relatively. They're good. They're all right. I do love them. They could be jazzed up a lot. If you do the mozzarella, I feel like you'd have to slice them. Yeah, the inside stays a little too doughy. Slice them and put some cheese in there and then kind of pinch them back up like little garlic knot sliders. Half a meatball and some mozzarella. Sure. Yeah, but then this is just just a meatball slider. And? It's your fucking that, problem. No, but you're you guys just turned a thing you don't like into another thing that exists. That's just not the That's thing. That's America right there, son. <laughs> Welcome to meatball. the melting pot, Kimmy. Yeah, yeah. It's getting more fun to do with table three. Please. Dump them in. Uh, oh, by the way, the melting pot website does not have a menu. It just has a lot of franchising options. They're really precedent. Burn and turn, baby. That's funny. Remember we were talking about that? <laughs> oh yeah. About we were we, I think when we were down uh we were in Atlantic City or something like that. And there was a sign for this shitty Italian place, and it said, the first, there was nobody in there, and it said, franchising opportunities available inside. And it was like, oh, you think you could do better? Huh? <laughs> yeah, we're tanking. Let's see you take a shot. Take a guy. step up to the plate, hot yeah, shot. Yeah. I love how it's also like, what, do you want a sandwich? All right, how about a franchise? Yeah. Like, I came in to spend seven bucks. You're really upselling me with a $90,000 investment. You could do a chicken parm, and uh, you want to buy the place? Yeah. <laughs> Who's going door-to-door franchise shopping? Any fra- any restaurant that has franchising opportunity on <laughs> it sucks. N- needs, a f- needs a cash infusion <laughs> yeah, quick. Can- that's the fucking, that's to keep the sheriff off your back for a couple of days. <laughs> the, Talk the, about Robin Peter. The number one <laughs> item on the melting pot menu is the big night out. <laughs> And it's probably just a assorted of whatever, right? It's a date night thing, but it's it's very clear. It's like the Capitol Grill. They're trying to be like the upscale place by the mall. Sure. Which I respect. I like that. Check this joint out. Um, I could use a big night out. Well, for $14 more, you can get the bigger night out. Really? Oh, yeah. That's got lobster, baby. I'd be a fool not to. That'd be nice. You and your girl go out, eat for 10 minutes, and scream at her. <laughs> Hurry up! <laughs> this is my big night out. Grab this cheese up, man. <laughs> I'm holding a lighter under the pot as we walk out. I don't want it to cool down. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see here. This is from TNS. Uh, haven't had one read yet. Have you or anyone you know ever discovered a dead body? Jesus Christ. Which is a trashy thing. Because you're probably poking around somewhere you shouldn't be poking. No. Uh, no, I've never discovered one. I saw a homeless guy frozen to death. 
out in front of the Chinese embassy. <laughs> I noticed as I was taking the change out of his cup. <laughs> you all right, buddy? As I, I noticed as I, I was stealing his pretzel recipe. No, I was uh, I was living in New York, and I used to have to walk from Second Ave to First Ave to get the bus to go up to the Upper East Side, and we lived right next to the Chinese embassy, which is a huge fucking building, by the way, real creepy. Um, and he was... It was a super, super cold winter, mm -hmm. and I walked by, and the detectives had just gotten there. This guy had frozen to death outside. Damn. Yeah. Huh. No. And I was an adult. Yeah. It's not drugs, too. <laughs> Truth be told. I thought the cops were after you. Uh, yeah, I don't think I ever... I've, I've mentioned before we were in the woods, we saw, like, a shallow grave dug, but that was it. That was Whiskers or somebody. That was somebody's dog. No, this was a, like, an eight-foot fucking grave. Really? Yeah. A couple whiskers. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it scared the shit out of us. Uh, you think they might have buried somebody back there? No, it looked like they buried. They dug a hole to put someone in. It was like fresh dirt. Wait, it wasn't filled in. I've the talked hole, about the that. hole was dug. The hole was dug. Perfect coffin size. You just missed a whacking. We're like out in the woods. We're like deep in the woods. You know, oh, it was like shit. kids. And we were like fucking Polly Walnuts and Chrissy walking around. Yeah, we were like, what the? We're like, all right, let's fucking wrap this up. All right, no need to build this tree for it. Let's go look at these nudes in somebody's garage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's go to fucking Steve's house, steal some of those fucking wine coolers. Nah, never, never, that never happened. A lot of dead squirrels and stuff like that when you're walking down like an alleyway, and all of a sudden you smell that. Oh, that that smell of death. Yeah, I hate when you go into a bar or something and you smell it like dead a rat. Dead, dead mouse somewhere or something. Yeah. You're like. Uh, this is gonna this is gonna ruin this flatbread. Yeah, yeah, sucks. Um, all right, let's see here. Um, this is from Jimson. Uh, is your toilet seat currently crooked or not attached properly? Yes, yes. I think it's because we're bigger guys. Yes, it the, we're 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 larger than life, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And the pressure you put down of sitting and turning and whatever. you're blowing out lug nuts. Blowing they're, out. They're not they're lug plastic. Nuts. They're plastic clips. I would call them. <laughs> yeah. And you can't re-tighten them because they just snap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, sometimes I think in the middle of the night I pee on them a little bit. Not like on purpose, but like, if, you know, if I got the lights off. You got acid I, urine? No, no but that, that urine will fucking eat through it after a while if you, if you don't wipe properly. It's like a car down in the keys. <laughs> that fucking salt, salt chews, yeah. chews right through that. Uh, but we got to wrap Man. it up, gang. What a fun, fun hang, what boys. What a fun time. Love a good family episode. Uh-huh. Uh, what do we got here? We got some, Guys, some yeah, ticks. Let's let's plug the ticks. Uh, we, we added another show in Philly, which is fucking crazy. The venue's huge, but we were fucking... We said, let's live on the edge a little bit, so we fucking added a second show. Let's fucking sell that baby out. We appreciate the fucking support. We're adding a third show in Toronto. That's probably on sale by the time this comes out. We have two. Third show in Chicago. Third, second show, Sacramento. Yeah, third show in Chicago is almost sold out. Sacramento. So get those fucking tickets, gang. Uh, the live shows are a fucking good time. We'll see you out there on our run. Love you, gang. See you next week. Peace. Peace.